Hi, I'm Carla. Thanks for joining me in today's short practice. Today's short practice is just when you have either woken up and want to get your body moving or perhaps just want to spend some time on your mat and not have to think about what to do. And that is what today's practice is for. So thanks for joining me. Let's begin. You're going to, I'm taking a blanket to sit on just to make sure that I'm able to get onto the buttock bones. So when you're seated, you want to get the sacrum into the body. Abdomen has to come back to support that length in the lumbar spine. You want to lift through the sides of the body, opening across the collarbones and the chest. If you take your fingertips next to you, get a nice extension in the spine. And then without dropping that, bring your hands into the prayer position. So just take a moment to bring your focus to your body, to your breath, to your mat. Starting in a seated position with your breath or with a chant or with a meditation helps you just to bring your focus to your mat. Feel how the breath moves within the body, already begin to connect with the breath. And then on an inhalation, open up the eyes. And as you inhale again, stretch the arms up overhead. Urva Namaskarasana. And extend the arms out to the side. Utita Hastasana. Bringing them back at your sides. In the seated position, just take a gentle twist, warming up the spine. So not spending very long there, just twisting to one side and then to the other side. And release the legs, change the cross of the legs. Find that extension of the spine again, that openness of the chest. With the support of the hands, you're able to keep the thighs descending down. And with that grounding element of the legs, with that extension and lift of the chest, take a twist. As you twist, you empty out the abdomen, you wrap the organic body around the spine. The last thing to turn is the head. Then coming back to center, find that full extension of the spine again. So you want to twist on an extended spine, not a slumped spine. And as you exhale, you turn the body. Each inhalation, extend the spine, lift and open the chest. Each exhalation, turn a little bit deeper and releasing back to the center. Coming to Adho Mukha Virasana now. So if you're not very flexible and you're not very good at forward bends, you might want to have a set of bricks to help you and a blanket and a few other supports are always useful. Toes together, knees are apart. And make sure that the knees are only enough apart that the thigh is going to support the sides of the body. So extend the spine, settle the sides of the body on the thigh, extend the arms forward, let go of the head. This is Adho Mukha Virasana. If you're unable to do Adho Mukha Virasana easily, you can check out tutorials and just figure out different ways adjustments and props that you can use and then with the quietness come up onto all fours turn the toes under and at first just lift up onto the toes don't worry about getting the heels down it's, you're coming to your practice so first just stretch the legs fully come up onto the tiptoes get a nice height in the buttock bones Pushing into the hands, bring your chest and your armpits towards your knees so that the shoulders are not over the hands. You want a nice um, pyramid shape here. And then as you begin to settle, start to begin to take the heels back, the root of the thigh back, so that maybe the heels touch the floor in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Be strong with the arms, keep pressing into the index finger and the thumb. 
And then looking forward, step the right foot forward. If you're unable to step forward in one shot, just bring your hand across. Be on your fingertips here. So you've got a lift of the chest, nice space for the chest to move. And then gently place the left knee on the floor, turn the toes under. If you have any knee issues, take a blanket for that back knee. Otherwise, pressing into the shin, lift into Anjaneyasana. Lift your chest, open the armpits, keep the hips dropped low. When you've been here for a couple of breaths, on an exhalation, come down, taking the hands next to the foot, turn the back toes under, and now you're going to lift off that back knee and straighten the front leg into a wide Pajvotanasana. Here again, if you're unable to reach the floor, have a set of bricks. It just helps to really lift, um, you know, give you a little bit more extension to the arms so that you can extend the spine and the legs some more. From here, bend the front knee, and we're going to lift into Virabhadrasana 1. So bring that back foot in a little bit, steady that back foot, heel down, and come to Virabhadrasana 1. The warrior pose. Have a few strong breaths here, and as you exhale, come back down. Step back to Adam Mukashvanasa. Be here with your breath, with your body. If you're new to a yoga practice, you can come back to Adam Mukavirasana, the restorative pose we began with. From here, looking forward to where you want to go with a nice exhalation, bring that left foot in between the two hands, stretch that right leg back. So at first, just coming into a nice lunge here and then placing the back knee on the floor, turn the toes under, keep the hips low, the buttocks in, lift up to Anjaneyasana. Breathe. Lift your chest. If you have any blood pressure issues, don't lift the arms here. You can keep the hands at your knees. On an exhalation, hands at your sides, or at the sides of the foot rather. Turn that back foot in and lift to Pajvotanasana. It is a wide Pajvotanasana here, so try to extend both legs, extend the spine, square off the hips. From here, you're going to bend the front knee, step the back foot in, press the back heel into the floor, keep that back foot at an angle, and you're lifting to Virabhadrasana number one. Lift your chest. Be strong on both legs and turn your hips to face that left heel. On an exhalation, release down. Come back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Have a nice few cycles of breath here. Let go your head. And then bending the knees, taking them apart, bringing the big toes to touch. Come to Adho Mukha Virasana. In Adho Mukha Virasana here, you can rest your elbows on the floor, rest the forearms so that the shoulders and the neck are relaxed and released. Catch your breath. And then walk your hands back towards your knees. From Virasana here, just going to bring your hands onto the floor. Turn your toes under. And can you flip over your feet into the Malasana squat? If you're unable to get the heels on the floor, just pay attention to that. Keep stretching that Achilles tendon, trying to get down. And then with the hands on the floor, extend the legs for Ardha Uttanasana. If you come onto your fingertips, it adds lightness to the pose. If you're unable to come into the full forward bend to the floor, bricks are always very useful. So from Uttanasana, you're going to lift to come to standing in Tadasana. Now in Tadasana, you're going to so just to show you some variations of support, we're going to repeat that squat position. So if you take your heels on a blanket, if you're unable 
to get your heels comfortably on the floor. Then taking a heel on the blanket, you're able to come into the squats a little bit easier. And if you're unable to do Uttanasana with the hands on the floor, then the bricks are very useful. So we'll just play with those few poses for now. So stand with your feet hip distance apart. You can also take the feet together in the classic position, but if you struggle with the squat, if it's early in your practice, just keep the feet hip distance apart. Urdhva Hastasana arms coming forward to Uttanasana. In Uttanasana, we want to keep the sacrum coming into the body, keep the lift and grip of the thighs. Now, with the hands supporting you, keep the heels planted, keep the knees in line with the feet and begin to bend and descend the buttocks. Take a few breaths here. If you're comfortably on the feet, you can lift your arms over your head as if you're coming for a deep Utkatasana. Release the hands, come back to Uttanasana. You can release into the fuller Uttanasana if it's within your capacity to do so. And then lift to Tadasana. From Tadasana, either keep the feet hip distance apart or begin to work a little bit harder, taking them together here. We're going to mix things up a little bit. Lift the arms. Exhale, bend in Utkatasana. From Utkatasana, come all the way down to the squat. With the hands on the floor, push the floor away from you. Straighten the legs. Complete your Uttanasana. Lift to the halfway, strong legs, long spine, come to Tadasana. Just be in Tadasana for a few breaths here. And then coming to sit on the floor, back in Shrastikasana, where we were at the beginning of practice. And from here, we're just going to take a few moments of quiet Shavasana. So you're going to lie down on the floor. Keep your knees bent to start off with. And with the knees bent, just take the hands palms face up to the ceiling, relax the shoulders, move the flesh of the back, upper body down the back. And yeah, just with the eyes open, we're not in Shavasana yet. Just catch your breath, feel the effects of the poses on your body. You can bend your knees and hug them into you. We began with a twist, so we're just going to finish with a twist. Jatara Parivartanasana with the knees bent. So arms out to the side in line with the shoulders. And as you exhale, you bend both knees to the side, to one side. Usually going to the right side first. You want to bring that top knee over. And then kicking off the floor back to center. Take a twist to the other side. Coming back to center, replace your feet on the floor. Take your hands at the sides of the body, but keep the hands slightly away from the chest so that the chest has space to move and breathe. Again, adjust the flesh of the upper back so that it is spread along the floor, but pinned down towards the back waist. With the knees bent, you can get the buttock flesh away from the back waist and settle the abdomen. And once the abdomen is quiet and extend the legs, drop the feet out to the sides, the palms face up to the ceiling in a gesture of receiving. Close the eyes. There are supports you can take if you're uncomfortable in Shavasana. Otherwise, make sure that you're completely comfortable, completely relaxed, completely at ease. Taking just a few gentle inhalations and exhalations here. This is intended to be just a short meeting with your mat. 
So we're not going to spend too much time in Shavasana, start to work on deepening the inhalation until the eyes feel like they want to open. Bring your hands onto your abdomen, just connect with your breath once more. And then rolling onto your side, coming to a fetal position, pressing into your left hand, you're going to come up. Take a moment here with the eyes closed and the hands in the prayer position, just to give thanks for the health and strength of your body. On an inhalation, lift your chest, open your eyes. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me. See you next time.